This railroad actually represents the story of America. When you visit the Nevada Northern Railway, you are traveling back in time. The main complex here is 56 acres with 60 buildings and structures, all original to the railroad. We have the original locomotives, the oldest one from 1909. Uh, we have the original cars, and we have the original paper record. This is a national historic landmark, which is the highest level of recognition the federal government can give on a historic property. We're equal with the United States Capitol Building, Independence Hall, and here we are in a room with a dirt floor, but it's a dirt floor that really matters because this room helped kept the railroad working. And it's that continuation that is just really amazing. A complex like this used to be about every 100 miles wherever there's a railroad track. We're the last one in the country. There are no others. We want to preserve, and not only that, we want to share the story. We want to show people what it took to create the country that we enjoy today. I actually took over the railroad on the verge of bankruptcy. <laughs> I am Mark Bassett. I'm the president of the Nevada Northern Railway Foundation, the operators of the Nevada Northern Railway Museum. I actually started volunteering 25 years ago and became the president 20 years ago. I was born and raised in Chicago, the rail hub of America. And uh, every other week, I had to go to downtown Chicago. I was probably about six, seven years old to get my allergy shots, and we took the train. And so that was just fascinating to me. And uh, one of my uncles took me out to see a steam locomotive. That just sort of cemented the, the desire, the interest right there as a young child. The Nevada Northern Railway has a great volunteer program. And so they were looking for volunteers, and my wife and I went, oh, how about if we volunteer? And uh, so we came down here. They trained us how to be brakemen and a conductor, and uh, it was just great uh, sharing our passion for the railroad with visitors from, from all over. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Then they needed a new president, and uh, one thing led to another, and boy howdy, I became the guy. If you don't understand where you came from, how will you understand where you're going? The history of the Nevada Northern Railway was the dream of one gentleman by the name of Mark Requa. At the turn of the last century, there are two inventions everyone wants, the electric light and the telephone. And every electric light circuit needs two copper wires. Every telephone circuit, every telephone number needs two copper wires. Just 10 miles away here was a mountain of copper ore, and they started mining it. To do this, he needed a railroad. So again, if you go back to 1900, there are no semis, there are no roads out here. It's all by the railroad. It's 140 miles across the desert, and it hasn't changed much in the past 100 and some odd years. You can go follow the rail line up north, and it's the same vista that Mark Requa saw in 1905. In 1983, they closed the mill and the smelter. The major employer of the community is gone. And the community's scared. It, uh, Nevada probably has more ghost towns than any other state of the union. And all the ghost towns were mining towns that are no more. And they were afraid that would happen here. The community here went back to Kennecott and said, you know what? You no longer need the railroad. You don't need the buildings or anything else. Will you give it to us? And Kennecott said yes. And, uh, last year was our 35th anniversary year of operating excursion trains here at the railroad. And it has been quite the rodeo. And, uh, and the future looks pretty bright for us. 
you're always one bolt away from a disaster. The, the common thread that brings the employees and the volunteers here is working with their hands. When you look at the locomotives and you look at the tools and everything, you can actually see the tools are worn. Uh, the independent brake valves on the steam locomotives are bronze, and they're worn down from the countless engineers over the century setting and releasing. You're part of this long line of individuals who kept the railroad running here. And, and I think that's what brings everyone here. There is this ownership. It's a sense of accomplishment. It's a sense of, these are my hands. I fixed this, and now this century-old piece of equipment is rolling out the door. I'm not satisfied with, oh yeah, we did this yesterday. Well, that's all well and good. What are we gonna to do tomorrow? What are we gonna do next week, next month, next year? And quite frankly, what are we looking at 100 years down the road? Because we already know what it looks like 100 years behind us.